In this video, we're going to see shunt clippers, which can do two level clipping. So when we say two level clipping, which means it clips or removes portion of the input waveform above higher reference and below lower reference. So we have to note this here that it will clip above higher reference and below lower reference. So let me take an example and then we'll go to the circuit. Let's say we have an input waveform like this where we have two references like this which means this is higher reference the first one let's say VR1 and let's say VR2 is the lower reference. What the definition says here is that above this portion will be clipped and below this portion will be clipped. As we have already seen both the kinds of clippers separately above reference clipper and below reference clipper. Now we need to combine both of them and make a circuit and that circuit would be like this with a current limiting resistor with two diode circuits shown here together. This is let's say D1, D2. This is voltage reference 1 and this is voltage reference 2. And we have input voltage here and the output voltage here. Now it will be really good to solve this kind of circuit and understand with real values for VR1 and VR2. Hence let me take an example with real values here. And to add to that, we will assume that these diodes are non-ideal so that we have to take the cut-in voltage into consideration and then analyze. So let me take a circuit with some values. I am taking an example here to solve that is with VR1 being 3 volts and VR2 is in fact minus 2 volts. So we have to note here that the top side is the negative and bottom side is a positive one. So the magnitude is shown here that it is 2 volts. Now we will find the equivalent circuit by substituting the practical diode with the ideal diode. It would look like this where I have taken the cut-in voltage for a silicon diode to be 0.7 and substituted here. So now with the new reference voltages being 3.7 and minus 2.7. So we can draw the circuit diagram to be like this where the reference voltages have been changed and shown by including the cut-in voltages. Now let's get to the analysis part for the circuit shown here that the first case where we will take Vi is greater than 3.7 volts. So we have two voltages here one is 3.7 and the other one is minus 2.7 looking at the polarity of the voltage there. So I am taking first the Vi greater than 3.7. In that case D1 is going to be on because the P side of the diode would be at higher potential than the N side hence D1 is on but D2 would be off because at N side the potential is higher than the P side. So D1 is on which means it's going to be like a short circuit and D2 is off which is open circuit. So let me draw the diagram here. In this case we can see the voltage at the output would be equal to 3.7 volts. Now let's take the second case where Vi is greater than minus 2.7 and less than 3.7 volts. In which case D1 will be off which will be taken as open circuit and D2 because if you look at the VI as it is going to be always greater than minus 2.7 D2 will be off because it is reverse biased hence even that will act like an open circuit. So in this case the circuit would be like this where as both the diodes are open circuit, there won't be any current flowing through the resistor. Hence the voltage at output would be 
nothing but the voltage at the input so v naught is equal to vi now coming to the third case where vi is less than minus 2.7 volts in this case obviously d1 will be off because the p side of the d1 is at lesser potential than n side hence d1 will be off which means open circuit and d2 will be on because the n side potential which is nothing but the input potential is less than the potential at the p side of the diode d2 hence d2 will be on which means it will be like a short circuit so let me draw the circuit diagram here in this case the output voltage would be equal to minus 2.7 volts now having seen all the three cases now let's draw the transfer function input on x axis and output on y axis let me make some markings here 1 2 3 4 even here 1 2 3 4 now as we have three cases here so the first one is vi greater than 3.7 so let me take 3.7 is somewhere here so let me divide this portion this is vi greater than 3.7 volts now the second one is in between 3.7 and minus 2.7 so here if you see this is minus 1 minus 2 minus 2.7 somewhere here so let me divide this so this is vi less than minus 2.7 volt which is the third case and in between is the second case so let me just put this here this is the third case and this is the first case and anything in between is the second case as we have seen in the first one when vi is greater than 3.7 volts the output voltage is 3.7 volts hence we need to take even here 3.7 which extended would come somewhere here so if v is greater than 3.7 v naught is going to be 3.7 indicating v naught is going to be constant which is represented here now coming to the second one in between minus 2.7 and 3.7 v naught is going to be v i which means we're going to have a 45 degree line here which means this line at a point and if we extend and see this will meet at minus 2.7 now when v i is less than minus 2.7 which is the third case v naught is going to be minus 2.7 hence it's going to be a straight line like this so this is how the transfer function of this circuit will look like and if you are given an input waveform which is changing from minus 5 volts to 5 volts let me just show a signal here let's say it is changing from minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts and as we have references here that as we have seen that 3.7 is one reference and 2.7 is another reference so the output for this one would be like this so the output waveform would look like this the amplitude limits of the waveform would be 3.7 volts here and minus 2.7 volts here if you like the video please give a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and thank you for watching